All right, guys, this is Ed from my Bring Back, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, I love the United States Census. If you want a place that will give you deep, rich, thorough data about the people living in this country, the census is the place to go. So today we're going to take a look at everybody's least favorite part of performing data analysis, and they call it munging, or cleaning up the data that you have on hand. And it can be tedious, it can be time-consuming, but it is vital to obtaining clear and accurate results and performing analysis that's meaningful, as opposed to just getting a jumble of junk. So I'm going to show you a basic case where you're given good data, but it still requires cleanup to make something more intelligible. And we're going to get our information today from the census here in the American Fact Finder. All right, so this is the product of the American Community Survey, a big old undertaking by the census they do every year. And these are five-year estimates for what we call housing characteristics, the type of places people live in this country. And I have them for every single county in America, which is pretty wild. That's an enormous amount of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and download these things, and we can spend some time looking at how to use ACS and the Fact Finder later, but stick with me. If I want one of these presentation-ready night formats, I want to get an Excel file. That looks pretty nice and touchable, doesn't it? What it's going to tell me is that this is just too darn big. It's got 12,572 columns, which is an awful lot. So we're going to have to get this through one of the alternative means, and it's going to be a common limited data rows only format, CSV here. So I'm going to get my data and annotations in a single file. And we're going to rip this thing down. Okay, so between shots here, I downloaded that zip folder it offered me, and I extracted it into a folder here on my desktop. Nothing too much to worry about. If you need help doing that, you can look it up. Pretty trivial material, and you can see what I have is four files. I've got a couple of text documents that have readme information, and I've got two CSV files. Now, these are associated with OpenOffice on my machine. It's likely they're associated with Excel on yours. Not too big a deal. Let's take a look at them. The first one has metadata, it says. So if we pop this guy open, we'll see that these end up being the column names for the data. And my goodness, there's a huge number of them. Looks like there's actually 567 columns here. Additionally, uh, we go over here, we see that the columns are not terribly informative. So one of the things we need to do to start our cleanup is to get the right column names on top of each column. And we're not going to do this in LibreOffice. We're here to learn about R. We're going to do it in R. So I'm going to launch my R terminal here and you'll say, whoa, Ed, that looks different than in previous videos. And I'll say, you're right, it does look different. Turns out it really isn't all that different at all, though. When you get into it, all we're going to be doing here is getting comfortable working in the console, giving input, getting output, not worrying about how to save, having a save script on the side. We're just going to try to do some data cleanup here. So follow along with me. You'll be able to see the commands. It will not be all that radically different than the previous videos. Obviously, the first task at hand here is to get that data we downloaded up into the R terminal. So I'm going to make myself a data frame, and we'll call it ACS data. And we're going to give it the value returned by read.csv. And then I'm going to type the path to that big old initial data set that with annotations file I just obtained. Now you'll note it takes a second or two here to get this stuff in. That's because it's a big old file. Seven megabytes in a CSV means a lot of information. And it's so much information, in fact, that our typical methods for examining it will not really be all that useful to us. So if I look at head of ACS data, which is something we've kind of gotten used to doing throughout these videos, you'll see, oh my god, it just starts pouring output all over me. I don't know what much of this means it's relatively context free. We've reached the bottom. I feel none the wiser. And things like running string on it would, uh, would do the same things for us. Not all that helpful. So one thing we can do to start with to clean this data up is to get those column names from that other file that we saw and apply them to the columns here. So let's take a look at how to do that. So to get that data in, I'm going to have to read it just like I did with the other one. So I'm going to cheat, use my up arrow to go back a couple commands in the console. And we're just going to get that metadata CSV, close that out, and make sure I'm not assigning it to the same variable. Scrolling right on over here, we'll just call them ACS headers. And I'm going to stop myself here because we know something about the file already, and we should be mindful of it, which is that this metadata file doesn't have column names up at the top of it. It just kind of starts right off the bat with GUID and ID. 
which are very much like very much like the rest of the rows. So I'll need to put header equals false on this, otherwise I'll count those things as the column headers, the column names. So we're going to pass that read CSV function a headers false. And if we look at that data frame we just read in, look at this. We've got the less sensical column names, and then we have the more sensical column names in the second column. All right, and that actually takes only one line of code to accomplish that task. Pretty simple. Uh, the task at hand, of course, being getting the column names applied appropriately to data. So we'll do call names, ECS data, and we're going to assign it just ACS headers in that second column. Oops, need a capital V there, otherwise we're not going to get much done. Now let's look at just that first row of ACS data, which is going to flood us. Look, look, unlike before, I'm getting words, and words mean something to me. Now I'm getting way too many of them. We're going to have to continue to subset and bring this thing down. But you can see, oh gosh. That, uh, that we've made some progress. Now obviously, munging is going to be a multi-step affair here. This video has been longer than a lot of the other videos, and we're not anywhere near done with this data set. We're going to continue to show you tips and tricks and ways to go about these things, but I just wanted to make something that made it evident to you as you're going through this data analysis learning that a lot of the work is going to be uh, drudgery to a certain extent. You know, It's going to be stuff that's less than totally engrossing. You can make beautiful visualizations. You can make interesting conclusions. You can find important relationships, but to get to that part, you've got to have data that's cleaned up. So we haven't finished here. We've just begun, but I wanted to show you how you take the first steps in the process. All right, so if I bored you out of your mind, that's mission accomplished because data munging just plain sucks. There's no two ways around it. It takes a long time and it's not all that exciting. We're going to make another video with this same data set, the next one, cleaning it up, getting it ready, and looking at some of the stuff that's in there, but it's going to take a lot of work. And so stick with us. Keep watching. This is Ed. My bring back. Subscribe on YouTube. Do what you got to do to keep it coming into you. Stay dedicated and you'll get results, man. You'll get them.